So with the Olympics, people are obsessed with medal tables, the performance of one country over another. Where's China? Where's Russia? Who's got the most medals? And it coincides with the fact that the Olympics, as a data source, is incredibly closed. You had to pay an awful lot of money to get the live results data. So we thought, what if we can mash up the data that we can see, those medal tables, with other types of data? What if you could weight those medals by things like population or team size? Because if a small, poor country wins five gold medals, that's got to be worth more than a rich country like Britain winning five gold medals. How would that work? And when we thought about it, we, we tried various techniques of doing it, and I kind of thought this is where we need some real statistical rigour. And that's why we went to Chris's team um, at Imperial College. Although our intuition about what fair means in this context tells us that richer countries should be somehow penalised, it doesn't tell us exactly by how much. As statisticians, we have a big variety of tools to measure that effect and try to correct for it in the optimal way. However, when we did that, we came up with an abstract score that no longer represented a medal. We wanted something that people could actually understand. So they would understand this was equivalent to 10 gold medals or you know, Grenada's single gold medal would kind of propel it up the league table. So we had to iterate a little bit until we managed to compromise and come up with a figure which could be interpreted as a medals count, but underneath that, there was still the statistical toolbox that we know and love. What we thought was we really need something visual to show this because it's such a popular part of what we're doing. And that's where we went to Gary and said, you've got a day, what can you do for us? The data blog came to me and I asked whether um, I could sex it up and make it a bit more visual. And uh, they also said, can you do it? You know, Pretty quick, pretty damn quickly. An important part of a lot of interactive visualizations now, especially if they're on a breaking story, something that's changing day to day, is that you can update them. You don't want a designer to have to redraw the entire thing from scratch each day. And the great thing about this visualization is Gary had it running off a Google spreadsheet. So we just updated those numbers every day. It changed the graphics live as it happened. The most important thing about uh, any data that's supplied, whether it's a spreadsheet or any, any other way, is that it has to be precise, it has to be accurate, and there has to be a logical way for the code to talk to it and, and know it's going to get back the, the, the right information. As soon as you present something in numbers, immediately everyone has their own opinion about it. And it's actually much harder to guide the conversation. The public really took to this. And what was interesting was that you saw things like the New Zealand government were daily putting out population adjusted figures to show how brilliant their team's performance was in the games. And what we found were people were really initially starting to discuss why this might be, why one particular country is good at running or why one particular country is overperforming, punching above its weight when you look at its economics or the size of its population. So I guess to me what was surprising in working with The Guardian in this was the amount of overlap between what we do every day and what a data journalist does every day. We use very similar techniques and uh, at the end of the day the objective is the same, to tell a story using numbers. I think that the, the nice thing about this data is it allows you to explore it. So say you're interested only in Cuba, you can find Cuba on that table and see its performance compared to all these kind of variables. And that kind of endless content is what really marks out data journalism because you know, a reporter writing a piece will, will have to focus on the main countries because just the length of, of words and so on. Whereas we can say, explore the data for yourself, tell us what you think it means and engage you in that kind of community aspect of data journalism.